Hey everybody and welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen from the Smith Hill Library here in Providence, Rhode Island, part of the Community Libraries of Providence. And I'm coming to you from my basement workshop. And today we're going to look at Crusader tanks. These are British cruiser tanks from the uh, early part of World War II. These fought mostly in North Africa. And there's a series of these different tanks and with that series, Italeri Models put out several of them. We're going to have a look at those right now. So this is the Mark II of the Crusader line. This is an Italeri kit. And you'll notice this has this extra little turret in front, which is how the early Crusader tanks were designed. So you had the main turret here with a two-pounder gun, which is like a 40 millimeter anti-tank gun that fired solid shot armor piercing rounds. It didn't fire the high explosive rounds. And you'll see it's got two machine guns. It has one in the turret and it's got one in this little auxiliary turret in the front. So after a few different uh, mocks of this tank, they eventually did away with this forward turret kind of realizing it wasn't terribly effective in the long run. But when I look at it, the one thing that tends to make me think, all right, so this is in you know, the Sahara Desert in North Africa. I can't imagine how hot it would be for that guy sitting in that little turret in front. That must have been sweltering and a miserable experience, you know? Uh, you can see that it has a nice suspension system that we've seen this on other tanks, like Russian tanks and some of the German ones. So this is a Christie suspension, which was designed by uh, an American by the name of Christie. And T-34, for example, is famous for this design as well, as that suspension system was sold around the world in the 1930s. What that allows is it allows for a pretty uh, agile vehicle, and that's what these were. These are pretty fast-moving uh, tanks that could, especially in the desert, where they could really go play at pretty high speeds in the flat, barren terrain. One of the drawbacks of the Crusader series is that they, they tended to suffer mechanical issues throughout their existence, you know. It was one of the downsides. But other than that, these, these fought very well, and they were probably the best tank that the British had in North Africa overall. Although some could argue the Valentine, and even the Matilda had its day, too. Debatable. <laughs> so this is the Italeri kit. Actually, all of these are Italeri kits. They tended to uh, do a whole series of them. So this is the type type 2. And one of the quick ways of pointing out the differences is if you look at the gun mantlet, you know, how that's designed here. So that distinguishes this as a Mark II. And I'll show you what the Mark I looks like in a moment. This one's the 3. As you can see, they did away with that extra turret in the front. They blocked it off and used it for something more efficient than that gun. So this is also in uh, North Africa. This is in Tunisia. This is with the 6th Armored Division. You can see the uh, that male fist, the armed fist, there for the 6th Armored Division. And this is in North Africa and Tunisia. And parts of Tunisia were a lot greener than other parts of North Africa, thus the green camouflage, which was useful in that, on that battlefront. This is toward the end of the war in North Africa. So the differences with this one, you can notice, you know, aside from the uh, that forward turret being gone, you can see it's quite a difference to the uh, to the turret, especially the mantlet is very different. And now we've got a bolted on additional plate there. And now we've moved up to a six pounder gun, which I believe is a 57 millimeter. I could be wrong, but I think it's in the like a 57. So it's got a better hitting, hitting cannon in there, but still keeps the speed and other features that were good on these tanks. And we look at some other ones here that they've got that Italeri's put out as well. So this is the Mark I. And there's a few differences here. You can see the gun mantlet's quite a bit different. 
there, and it does still maintain the small turret in front. So they found out with a few changes to the molds, they could just keep adding and creating different spin-offs of this series. Because this kit's been around, well, the original uh, Mark III kit, it's been around since I was a kid. So I built one of those when I was maybe 12 or something, you know. So it's got the typical Italeri instruction sheet with the parts breakdown, numerous different uh, assembly sequences. You can see the, the turret there and how that all goes together with that gun mantlet. So it's a very effective thing for a model company to do is to, once you've got one mold, you can kind of keep working the whole series and making, you know, just minor changes and creating a whole new vehicle. So, and this one's got a few different painting options. Set that cool contour scheme up here. And then there's some in overall sand. For Operation Crusader in North Africa in 1941. The contour scheme is used for the 7th Armored Division in Operation Battleaxe in 1941. Then we have the prototype tank that was built in 1940. You can do that one in a solid green. And then there's another sand colored one, which also used in uh, Operation Crusader in 1941. So, and here's the parts breakdown. So you see it, you know, still has some of the pieces are in there that went to the original kit of the Mark III. You know, there's all your wheels. It's got rubber band tracks, which have its pros and cons. And here's another tree that's got the different pieces that you're going to need for the Mark I version with the uh, the new gun is in there and it's got the rubber band tracks which has its ups and downs the main problem with the rubber band tracks on a crusader is that you have to cr create a sag somehow Otherwise, the tread's going to sit way in the air, like by suspended animation above the wheels, where it would never do that because the weight of the track would hold it down. So you may need to come up with a way of weighting it so that it will sit properly, either super glue tying it. I think with this one, I think I actually melted a couple of uh, pins into the side of the hull to force the track down. I mean, there's many different ways, but that's one thing you're going to have to think about when you build one of these because otherwise it's going to be you know treads floating in midair or if you do this one you've got the sand skirts which hide everything which is kind of nice <laughs> you don't have to see a thing what problem so anyway so that's the mark one and i think this was the uh the last release that they have done i could be wrong I'll check the other dates. This is from 2003 when they put this one out. Let's take a look at some of these other variants. Then they also have the Crusader 3 anti-aircraft Mark 3. So this is taking an old Mark 3 and then changing out the turret and putting in this one with the anti-aircraft cannon. And these were used in Normandy and Northwest Europe after D-Day. So at this point they were taking the the chassis of the tank because at this stage after 44 I mean these were phased out of frontline service in 43 after like pretty much after the battle in North Africa ended. Uh, they needed to upgrade and create newer vehicles, stronger vehicles to take on the incredibly more and more um, devastating German tanks are coming into the into the battlefield and the 57 um, six-pounder gun wasn't really going to cut it anymore they had to keep up gunning so pretty much the usefulness of the Crusader diminished so they began making other specialty vehicles like anti-aircraft vehicles here 
So it's essentially the same assembly, except you've got a different turret now. And this gives you a couple of different marking options. This one there, which, oops, which was in Holland, late 44. And then got a couple here from D-Day that you can do. These are all in a kind of an olive drab type color that they used in that period of the war. Oops, this might take my little giraffe over there. You can see a couple of color pictures there. One challenge with this one is going to be the decal that has to go over the top of the turret of the star, but you'll see here that they they cut it so you can do it in pieces and layers so that it can try to conform to this this odd shape of that turret top. It's an open top to turret design. So you have to get that decal to conform. We'll see how that goes. I've generally done well with the Tallery models for decals, etc. I think they go together pretty well. One of the things that's a little challenging though for these is that you have they tend to use these little round washers that you have to put into the into the wheels if you want them to spin. They try to put half the wheel in, put a washer over, put the other part, a cap at the end. So if you want the wheels to spin, it's a little tricky. But to be realistic, um, once you put all the tracks and everything on it, they're not they're not moving anyway, so you might as well just glue them. So let's have a look at Tanks World War II by Chris Ellis. Now I've had this book since I was a teen. This has been on my collection for quite a while now. It is a nice book if you can find this. Have the Crusader here, another one from the Tunisian battles from the 6th Armored Division in green, and then it shows you the other history of these different cruiser tanks. Sorry about that, the camera kind of cut off for some reason. Anyway, as I was saying, it shows you the kind of the family tree of the different Crusader and other um, cruiser tanks in the period like the A9 and the A10, which these are now available from like Bronco models, now it does these. That may be a story for another day. But you can see the different types of Crusader tanks, including the anti-aircraft. And then there's this one here too. This has the uh, 40 millimeter, I don't know if it's a Boffers or Bofors gun, and an open turret. This kit is also available by Atelier. You can find this one online. So that's another one that they make. And this one here is the uh, the one that I was just showing you with the twin 20 millimeter machine guns that are in it. So that's available. So pretty much all of these are available. And there's even, I believe, this one in 32nd scale that Airfix has uh, had on its uh, list of vehicles that's been in existence since I think the 70s. It's an old kit. But they have one as well. Anyway, so that's a quick look at the different... Crusader tanks in its series, and as far as the build -a buildability, <laughs> if that's a word, uh, I found these to be great fun. When I built this as a kid, I loved it. I really loved building the model, which is why I built many more of them, because they're just really fun to put together. Uh, even for the age of these kits, because I mean the original molding, like I said, go back to the 70s, but they're still really good. You can still get... You can either find the old Italeri kits that are still floating around the market, but Tamiya has taken up this kit anyway, the, the Mark III, and they're they're boxing this in the United States now, so you can get it that way through Tamiya. They seem to be marketing the Italeri kits here in the United States now. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but there's been something with with Italeri and marketing here in the United States and that's a story for another day apparently but 
Anyway, you can you can get this one now through Tamiya if you wish. But these were great fun to build. I really enjoyed them. Looking forward to working on some more. And that's our model building workshop for today. I took some close up pictures of these so you can see them in more detail. And uh, keep on building. We'll see you guys soon. Bye now.